Dear God, I pray for these folks that decide that they want to do this stuff on social media for clout, for likes, views, shares, and attention. Lord, we pray for these folks that they receive the healing that they need. Amen. Most of you know about the Tessica Brown story, the 40-year-old woman that decided to put Gorilla Glue in her hair. Well, after the aftermath, you would think that people would learn their lesson and not use Gorilla Glue on their hair. Well, because of clout, we're back again. So I just want to show you what's happening on the internet because it's important for you to be aware and to have intentional conversations with your children because they can see this mess too. So this TikToker decided that they wanted to put Gorilla Glue in their hair. Now, the interesting part about all of this is that this started three days ago. Now, if we go back to her post from three days ago, you can see that there's no Gorilla Glue. This was well after Tessica Brown had her surgery and it was posted all over TMZ in Shade Room and it became a national headline. So three days ago, if you scroll her TikTok feed, you will see that there is no Gorilla Glue three days ago. You did this knowing the outcome. So uh, let's play some of the clips. You guys, my hair will not comb. Y'all already tried what? So, so you decide to put Gorilla Glue in your hair, and then you are attempting to comb it. You posted it on TikTok. Not sure what you desire the outcome to be, but let's continue because, of course, you document this entire thing. Uh, Y'all, I'm on my way to the hospital right now. My scalp is burning. I need to go to the hospital so they can remove this Gorilla Glue. I have no idea what to do. I try washing it. It doesn't come off. Um, yeah, I need to go to the hospital. I'm on my way to the hospital right now. Um, what the fuck? We're in the middle of a global pandemic where hospitals are at capacity, where we're limited on the amount of doctors and nurses and caretakers to handle this virus. And you decide to go to the hospital because you decide to put Gorilla Glue in your hair after national headlines of someone else doing the exact same thing. Let's continue. I got out the hospital and they did nothing for me. Look at my hair. This is what they told me to do. You should apply either olive oil, tea tree oil, or coconut oil on your hair to attempt to remove the glue. Or you can shave your hair. So you go to the ER in the midst of a global pandemic and you explain to your audience that they're unable to help you and that you either need to apply some oils to your hair or to shave it off. But of course, that that wasn't all. Of course, it had to keep going. Update on the Gorilla Glue, it did not come out. I used coconut oil for like half an hour and then I um, just washed my hair and there's still Gorilla Glue in my head. Guess I gotta go bald. So, mind you, Tessica has already had her surgery, has already went through removing the Gorilla Glue in her hair. She wasn't able to wash her hair out. She had to have a special procedure. So not sure why you thought that your hair care products 
that you can buy at a Walmart or a Sally's or wherever you get your hair care from definitely shouldn't be in the arts and crafts department and it definitely shouldn't be in the home improvement department. Folks, this is clout. This is clout chasing. Um, a lot of people know about the Tessica Brown story. They might not know her name and recognize that her name is Tessica. But if you said the Gorilla Glue Girl, which I don't even know why the girl was there. She's a grown woman, but neither here nor there. This is what's happening on social media. So I just go back to, well, I just wonder if our kids think that it's okay to put Gorilla Glue in their hair because you have a 40-year-old and a 20-year-old that's doing it on social media. And there's more people. But let's continue with this saga because this is just too much. After Tessica's story, you decide that you want to do the same thing. And then you decide that you're going to ask people for money. You're going to create a GoFundMe account? So I didn't want to do this video, but I'm thinking about starting a GoFundMe page. Um, Maybe just so people can help with my gorilla glue situation and you know it, it it pains me when there's organizations and people that are dealing with real serious things and you have people that do the silliest things and it goes viral and it generates so much money so after asking for money on GoFundMe, there was someone that even donated $3,000. Watch this. I just want to say thank you to everyone who donated to my GoFundMe. I now have enough funds to get surgery and I will be flying out to LA. Thank you guys so much. And I raised enough money and I'm getting surgery. I just want to thank this person so much for donating $3,000. I definitely see the money. Thank you so much for my Gorilla Glue situation. You guys know it's definitely been a journey with this freaking Gorilla Glue. It's been crazy. So thank you so much. Of course, that wasn't the only person that attempted to do this. There was a man that actually ended up going to the hospital because he decided to apply Gorilla Glue to a cup. And the cup was stuck to his face. So this individual decided that they wanted to do this challenge. And let's watch the clip. Here I have. That's your name, too. I'm going to show y'all something. I got some Gorilla Glue right here. Super Glue Real. Why so? I'm going to take it, put it on this cup, put it in my mouth. Then I'm going to be licking and get it off. It's easy. Gorilla glue garbage. I'm telling you now. Watch out. Put it on here. Then I'll put it on my mouth. We're in a global pandemic. And people want to waste time and resources when our country needs it right now. There's people struggling with COVID. And because you decided that you wanted to go viral, you decide to apply Gorilla Glue to a cup to try to prove that Tessica story wasn't real and that the Gorilla Glue is weak. Now you're here. But wait, there's more. Now, he posted that video six days ago. Three days ago, which was the same time that Miss Reyes decided that she wanted to add Gorilla Glue to her hair. He decides that he has a new song coming out and he makes a post that says new single. What a YouTube link. So when I went to the YouTube link that was advertised on his IG page, 
the video was removed. However, he did post a snippet on his IG story. So let's look at that. If it's up, then it's stuck there like a real If it's up, then it's stuck there like a real If it's up, then it's stuck there like a real You need to quit. Why? Well, you could Why? give it up because I ain't about to quit shit. Nope. And I ain't about to stop until a nigga yeah. get rich from yeah. making ice cream to glue. Man, I'm coming out this bitch. So he posted this song two days ago. And you should see the comments. I mean, the comments are lighting his behind up. Here's his caption, though. As painful as it is to rap. I still have to make the best of this crazy situation. Just a little clip. Hashtag Gorilla Glue. Hashtag Gorillas. Hashtag Gorilla Glue Man. Hashtag O-R-I-T. Now this Gorilla Glue challenge isn't the only challenge that he's posted on his Instagram. Do you remember the ice cream licking challenge where folks decided to open the containers of ice cream, lick it, and put it back in the freezer? Well, the challenge is on his page too. Let's take a look. Now, the caption of this Instagram post is, we worldwide now. F what y'all talking about. Yeah, I did it. And what? Hashtag Bluebell ice cream. Hashtag Louisiana. Hashtag ice cream challenge. Hashtag CNN. Hashtag breakfast club. Hashtag time magazine. Hashtag New York Times. <sighs> um, if you go back on his page, um, you will even see how he actually added his at name on the video that he had posted. Lenise Martin from Louisiana was arrested after posting his video. He was charged with unlawful posting of criminal activity for notoriety and publicity and with tampering with property. He joins us now. So Len, that, that was you in the video, right? Yeah, that was me, Doc. So when you watch yourself, what do you see? What do you think is happening? I mean, again, it's me looking at myself on that. So it was just a childish act, man me not considering other people. At the time, it was a joke, you know? And then you sit back and look at it like that was very inconsiderate. It didn't make sense, you know, at all. And then it cost me a lot, too. Take me back to your mindset. Why did you do it? Well, I mean, I never had any... I didn't go to the grocery store with intentions on licking ice cream. I mean, we went there. We did it. We left the store laughing. It was a joke. Didn't think much of it. And within 30 minutes, I had police surrounding my house. And that so after his appearance on Dr. Oz, you would think that he would not be participating in any of these type of social media challenges. Well, if you explore his page, he still hasn't stopped. The root issue is that antics like this is celebrated, is liked, is shared, and it's pumped through the algorithm. I'm just waiting on the commercial like... Have you been on social media for over seven hours a day? You might be entitled to compensation. There's a lot of stuff that's happening in the world, and I need people to be intentional. There's nothing that I can do about these adults and what they decide to do on the internet. But I can use my voice for parents to be intentional with what their kids are watching. Parents, you need to know the apps that your kids have access to. You need to know who your kids are talking to. Our newer generation has been overexposed to technology and there is no way that we can change that. However, we need to have some intentional conversations and hold these tech companies accountable 
for making sure that there's quality content that's being shared on the space, that they are making sure that they're keeping the same energy with upholding policy violations. In addition, being mindful with what is being pushed out to children. And I go back to you parents. Parents, your child that's seven years old should not even have a TikTok account. Your child that is 15 years old, why do they have a cash app that you don't know about? You need to be intentional and check these apps and check the cell phone. And most importantly, we need to have conversations on what we celebrate. Folks, it's a dangerous world out here, especially with a desire to be liked and the desire to be social. Social media has exploited all of the human characteristics. And now they're just collecting data. They're collecting data on how long you're on the app, what you click on in the app, and have created profiles that they sell to advertisers so that they can influence you to spend money. This is how this works. And the more that you're aware of that, the more you can be intentional with the decisions that you make on a day-to-day basis. Our children, our children deserve better and we need to be focused and intentional with them. These devices and the environment that they're in on their phone is developing them and creating them. And oh boy, the stuff that is on social media is wild. We need to stop celebrating this stuff. We need to hold these companies accountable for what they promote and what they push out. Yeah, I'm off my soapbox today. If you want to be a Patreon, the link is in the description. Thank y'all for tuning in and I'll see y'all next episode. People are high. Receipts now. People do stuff for clowns.